Voting is less than four months away, so her, her selection is really, really very limited. I need you. The fiance makes me feel so happy. He's from Barcelona, Spain. Oh, how did you meet on Hi. Ariana. Hi. Um, I brought the head coach from the Pittsburgh Penguins, who I work with every day, Dan. Wow. I'm sad if I can't get this. I love this dress. <sighs> if she's not able to get my dress, what am I going to do then? Oh my God. It doesn't do $15,000 worth on her to me. I want the ball gown. I, I don't. Number three, a race against time. In the city of Kleinfeld, Ebony, a bride to be, embarked on a mission to find her dream wedding dress. Accompanied by her mother and two best friends, they entered a renowned boutique with hope. Time was short and the wedding was approaching rapidly. Debbie, an experienced consultant, took charge of the task. Ebony wanted a dress that reflected her style, away from traditional ball gowns. She envisioned an ivory gown with a budget of $3,500. A ticking, so I need to find a dress immediately today. Our budget is about $3,500. Okay, are you ready to try on? Yes. Okay. Oh, hi, hi, beautiful. Okay. How are you? Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Laced. This is like a really lucky find. Oh my god, Debbie, wow. you're a lifesaver. Debbie and Randy searched tirelessly through the limited stock. They found a dress, but it failed to capture Ebony's heart. They continued their search. Undeterred, they scoured the racks once more and found a dress with an ethereal quality. It satisfied Ebony's desire for glamour, but she felt a disconnect. With time running out, Randy presented a final option that required alterations. But I think I'm going to see what everybody else thinks. What do we think? Uh, hey, you know what? Like I'm not crazy about the ruffles. Wah, wah. And I think it needs to be a little hot. Oh my god. I don't want a ball gown. I do not like the way they look on me. Bling that you like. Mm -hmm. That is true. But I hate it. Okay, so this has the... And that dress is stiff. It looks like a palm dress. I'm extremely nervous, and I have no idea what we... Let me get a dress. This is it. I don't know if I can get in, in on time. Ebony tried it on, and it was a transformative moment. The dress captured her spirit, and she radiated confidence and beauty. The staff at Kleinfeld promised to deliver the dress in time for the wedding. They worked tirelessly to expedite the alterations. On the wedding day, Ebony wore that dress that had captured her heart. She radiated joy and enchantment as she walked down the aisle. Debbie, Randy, and the Kleinfeld team celebrated their triumph, knowing they had made Ebony's dreams come true. Amidst tears of joy, Ebony embarked on a new chapter of her life with her soulmate, forever grateful for the determination and expertise of the Kleinfeld family. Love. That's the one. That's, That's the one. beautiful. Yes. Oh, that looks like it. A boy, you should never wait till last minute to shop for a dress. That mean. She waited three years to shop for a wedding dress. Now you wanted to pull out a dress in three months? Of course. Yes. <laughs> what a relief. We can get the dress for Ebony in time for the wedding. So, Ebony, are we good? Thank you so much, Debbie. Oh, my you God. are so welcome. Number two, Elusive Dreams. The clock was ticking for Elise Sears, a radiant bride-to-be from Louisiana. With only four months until her wedding day, she was feeling the pressure to find the perfect wedding dress. Accompanied by her mother Julia and her closest friends, Brittany and Tosha, Elise embarked on a quest to discover the gown of her dreams. Elise had always envisioned herself in a breathtaking mermaid dress, accentuating her curves and exuding elegance. On the other hand, her mother, Julia, held her own aspirations. She longed to resemble a princess in a magnificent ball gown, convinced that her financial contribution entitled her to an influential say in the dress selection process. Lots of tool. How do you envision Elise? Princess. Princess? Ball Explain gown. Print. Oh, ball wait gown. a second. will make me look like I'm a pageant girl. Is there a price point that we want to respect? Um, I want to say under 10000 To another, and now we're engaged to be married. Do we have any pictures of anything? This is Panina Tournay. I love this job. Determined to bring Elisa's vision to life, their dedicated consultant, Debbie, teamed up with Randy, an expert in the world of bridal fashion. They scoured boutiques and bridal salons, hoping to find the elusive Panina Tournay gown that Elise had fallen in love with. Eventually, they unearthed the coveted dress, but their joy was short-lived when they discovered its hefty price tag. 
a staggering $15,700. Undeterred by the price, Elise summoned the courage to try on the dress, hopeful that its beauty would win over her companions. Student. Oh, here it is. Oh, wow. Wow. Wait a minute. Okay, how much is this? I don't know. $1,500. So it's going to be a stretch. It's a little steep. <laughs> I'd like to try it and see how it looks. Have fun, ladies. As she slipped into the gown, a sense of enchantment washed over her. It was as if the dress had been crafted exclusively for her. Elisa's heart fluttered with excitement, but her enthusiasm was met with disappointment. Tosha, ever forthright, expressed her outright dislike for the dress, leaving Elise crestfallen. Julia, too, struggled to find enthusiasm for the mermaid style, yearning for the grandeur of a ball gown. The exorbitant price only fueled her reservations, causing her to hastily change her opinion. Heartbroken, Elise returned the dress and resolved to seek another opinion. Her mother stumbled upon a gown that perfectly embodied her own vision, a resplendent ball gown fit for a queen. However, this dress exceeded Elise's budget by a staggering $5,000, rendering it unattainable. Reluctantly, she resigned herself to the fact that it was not meant to be. I hate it. Oh! I don't think I've ever heard anybody say that. This was her favorite, so she wanted to try it on. No one likes this dress. I am very hurt and very upset. Elise's search continued, with each subsequent dress failing to captivate the hearts of her loved ones. She tried on a second Mark Zanino creation, a magnificent ball gown in a delicate peach hue priced at a more reasonable $9,000. Julia's eyes gleamed with joy as she envisioned her daughter radiating in this gown. But Elisa's heart did not resonate with the color. Reluctantly, she bid farewell to yet another dress, leaving her empty-handed with only four months remaining until her special day. You're in trouble. I try on this dress for my mom. I know that it's just what she wants. I just feel like I wore something. Yeah, I'm a okay. little nervous. Everything about it is beautiful. Surprised. The color, yeah. everyone loves this dress. The final dress she explored from Mark Zanino's collection held a price tag of $9,900. Elise stood before the mirror, her reflection adorned in a gown that exuded timeless elegance. Although she felt a connection to this dress, her friend and mother remained unconvinced. Overwhelmed by the lack of consensus and the weight of her impending nuptials, Elise made the difficult decision to leave the store without a wedding dress. I like it. I like it. Wow factor is still lacking. What? In this situation? <laughs> no, no, I like it. That's as much as you're going to get from us. I think it's your wedding and you need to pick a dress that you love. As she stepped out into the bustling streets, disappointment weighed heavily on Elise's shoulders. Time was slipping away and the daunting task of finding the perfect gown seemed insurmountable. However, she refused to surrender to despair. Determined to manifest her dream, Elise vowed to continue her search, drawing strength from the love that brought her and her fiancé together in the first place. Number 1. The True Bridal Beauty In the heart of Kleinfeld, amidst a flurry of bridal excitement, Jennifer, the esteemed director of communications for the Pittsburgh Penguins ice hockey team, embarked on her own quest to find the wedding dress of her dreams. Accompanied by her doting parents, her grandmother, and her ever-supporting best friend, she entered the prestigious boutique, basking in the knowledge that even the Penguins' team would have been there if not for an important game against the Rangers. I'm the director of communications for the Pittsburgh Penguins, and tonight we have a hockey game against the New York Rangers. Pushing, but not beating. Okay. What's comfortable for you price-wise? Probably around $3,000. And how do you pick her in? Simple, but... I think expensive. I know nothing about picking out. Jennifer's wedding plans were nothing short of grandiose. The ceremony would take place in the magnificent confines of a Pittsburgh cathedral, followed by a lavish celebration at the illustrious Carnegie Music Hall. The sheer opulence of the occasion matched the intensity of her love for Eric Ridgely, her fiancé of just 10 whirlwind months. From the moment they met, Jennifer had felt an undeniable connection a certainty that Eric was her soulmate. The task at hand was to find a dress that would capture Jennifer's vision. She longed for a silhouette that accentuated her waist with a belt-like detail, a touch of elegance befitting her graceful stature. With a budget of $3,000 in mind, Debbie, the ever-resourceful consultant, set out to unearth the perfect gown for the bride-to-be. However, there was a pressing concern. 
the need to depart Kleinfeld promptly, ensuring Jennifer and the Penguins' coach would make it back in time for the crucial game. Debbie carefully selected a Dennis Basso gown, priced at $2,400, that she believed might fulfill Jennifer's wishes. However, when Jennifer slipped into the dress, her disappointment was palpable. It simply didn't resonate with her vision, appearing far too voluminous. Her entourage echoed her sentiments, their expressions filled with concern. With a collective sigh, they decided to continue their search, determined to find a dress that would truly embody Jennifer's essence. Undeterred by the setback, Debbie returned with another option, only to be met with a distinct roll of Jennifer's eyes. Her best friend chimed in, deeming the style too outdated for the modern bride Jennifer had become. It was yet another miss, leaving them with limited time and mounting pressure. Sensing Jennifer's preference for something other than a ball gown, Debbie hastily retraced her steps, searching for an alternative that would capture the bride's heart. And then, amidst the frenzy, she discovered it. An exquisite Dennis Basso creation, priced just slightly above Jennifer's budget at $3,100. The moment Jennifer slipped into the gown, an ethereal transformation occurred. Her eyes sparkled with delight, and she uttered words she had yet to express. This is the first time I truly feel like a bride. Okay, just one minute. Aww. Aww. You look so pretty. She's like a beautiful angel. When I look at myself in the dress, I think that it's the dress. Yes. Eager to share her joy, Jennifer paraded before her entourage, who eagerly approved of her resplendent appearance. Emotion overwhelmed her mother, her tears a testament to the profound beauty her daughter exuded. Debbie, the ever-attentive consultant, placed a delicate veil atop Jennifer's head, and with unbridled enthusiasm, she exclaimed, yes to the dress! That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.